That's lovely okay, to so see you. Head. It's lovely to see you too. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, fantastic. That's really great. Is it okay at the moment? Wonderful. Really wonderful. Okay, great. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm very happy uh, to see you all here. And um, as you saw Carol Rainbow before, I have invited or asked uh, Carol uh, to be with us here because she is great, a great troubleshooter, and she's a great machinimatographer, and uh, she's great altogether. So I thought, well, <laughs> uh, have her in the background is always good, and she uh, also Ow. set up the room here. Now oh, she's disappeared. I can, cannot actually. <laughs> yeah, she's disappeared I now, <laughs> but um, she's in the background. So thank you, Carol, for us uh, bearing with us and staying here. Thank you. Um, Thank yeah. you. Both Carol and I work for the Camelot project. Um, and uh, in this Camelot project, as Tunter Chan has already told you, I think we are uh, producing uh, Machinima and you were part of uh, this as well. Carol is working as an um, administrator and um, filmmaker on this project and uh, I'm a research assistant on this project and this is why I'm doing all this data collection and I'm also filming but yeah and uh, so to start with I would like you to talk a little um, about yourself if that's okay would you like to start uh, Nelida and I think the rest of us could uh, mute the microphone so that we don't have any strange noises there. Is that okay? Okay. Lila, would you like to say something about yourself, about your background, who you are? I don't even know whether I pronounce your name correctly. So say something about what you do at the University of Istanbul or something. Can you hear okay, Lila? Uh, if, if you like, we can start instead That's of Nelida. That's great. That's fine. So uh, why don't you start? Fine. Thank you. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll go oh. next. No problem. Uh, my name is Tugay Elmas. Uh, I'm 25. I'm from Istanbul, Turkey. And for professional background, I have nothing at the moment. Okay, so I'm Nelida. 22 years old. I am a student at Istanbul University in the English, teaching, English language teaching department. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what else should I say? Oh, I cannot hear you. Okay, that's fine, Nelida. Um, uh, uh, Tugay, were you interrupted? Did you want to continue with what you're saying or was that all you wanted to share? To guy, was that all you wanted to say? Uh, actually, yes. Okay. That's all, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, Nangmur, uh, would you like to talk about yourself? At the moment, I'm uh, getting a strange noise from somewhere, so I cannot clearly. Hear. Uh, actually, I cannot hear. I don't know why. I think Nelida, you need to mute your microphone. Yeah, that's good. That's better. Okay. And okay, um, is it my turn or is it Yamur's turn? Yamur's. Okay. So it's mine? Okay. Yeah. So my name is Yamur Damla Aslan. Uh, I'm 20. Um, as you know, you know, we study in Istanbul University as, um, to become an English teacher. Um, as a professional background, I actually don't have any. So um, I taught privately for like half a year or something but other than that um, I don't have any professional background um, that's all I guess yeah I, I mean you're you all me? trainees um, ha have you ever had any um, any um, uh, training practice any teaching practice already 
Actually, I didn't have any, but uh, I think this semester I will be teaching in the language club of our faculty. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, did you want to add anything to the introduction, Elida, or is that okay? Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. No problem, no problem. So that was the introduction and about teaching practice. Jamu, you said uh, you don't have teaching practice yet. No, I think uh, that okay. How about the others? Have you got any teaching practice so far? I, I can go ahead actually. Uh, I, I have got teaching experience, but um, I used to give uh, private lessons to adults. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, I'm a volunteer at our uh, department student club, which is called uh, Language Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we do actually is we teach languages to fellow university students uh, of Istanbul University. And uh, I'm teaching English to uh, fellow students at the moment. Uh -huh. So it's, it's English, it's uh, not Turkish, right? No, mm -hmm. not Turkish. Mm -hmm. Um, and and the specific language focus you have, you said you teach adults. Um, what level and what focus um, are you teaching in? Uh, they're pre-intermediate students, uh, but I have experience with beginners as well. Uh, so uh, I'm used to teaching with different levels, variety of levels. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the others in this group said you don't have a teaching practice yet, right? Actually, I, I had a private class mm -hmm. um, last year. Just I taught privately to a little girl. She was she was a beginner though. That's why um, it it didn't take too long. So I, she just needed help for her school. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my next question is, uh, which technology and online platforms have you used mm -hmm. so far in your learning or teaching at university? Uh, we, we are familiar with Second Life, of course. Um, right. Other than that, uh, we are familiar with Edmodo. I don't know if you heard of it. Uh, and uh, in our language club, we are using an online platform called uh, Whiteboard. Uh, it's basically like Moodle. Uh, you can share texts, videos, and you can give homeworks, uh, great homeworks. Uh, and that's and plus Moodle actually. We are mm -hmm. using Moodle as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments? So you just butt in if you want to add something. I won't ask uh, each one of you, you just add what you would like to add to what somebody said. Um, okay. other, than the pro other than the program, we also learned some uh, website, for example, Glockster to create a presentation oh, and okay. things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and what you guys said. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anything else? Yeah, and I saw your fantastic machinima. I was really, really uh, intrigued about it. It was really, really great. And um, thank you. I would like, yeah, it was, you know, I looked at it and thought, wow. And um, I would like you to tell us a little about the machinima you created with your team. I mean, what triggered the idea and what were the steps from scripting to production and so on? How did I even end up here? What is this place? It was just yesterday that I was happy with my family at my home until police came to arrest me for something I have no idea about. 
Now even my own family thinks that I'm guilty. I would never believe that my husband would be capable of doing such a terrible thing if it wasn't for the evidence. All the charity money that I have donated was dirty money? We had a happy life, but you ruined it. By myself, what am I to do? How am I going to handle all this? How could you do this to us? I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. I am not guilty. Fool, fool, fool. You're blind, blind, blind. I wish I was a better husband. All I wanted was to provide a better future to my family. I wish I could make them believe me. You lied to me. You promised dreams to me. Studying abroad, living a rich life. I can even see my friends now. God knows what they are saying behind my back. What kind of a father you are. A father only thinks of himself. A selfish one. How can you say all this? He said he was not guilty. You just accuse him. You are only thinking of yourself. You are the real selfish one. My father would never do such a thing. I wish he was here to see your betrayal. Do you ever think how he must feel right now? Alone in a prison cell. Guilty of something he hasn't done. I wish you were in his place instead. Oh my sweet daughters. What will they do without me? I wish I could look into your eyes and say how sorry I am for making you live this nightmare. I wish this was just a dream. I know I have let you down. We had so much time to spend together. Until that deceitful partner of mine played a dirty game behind me. He's out there somewhere enjoying freedom. I'm here behind bars trying to figure out how to prove my innocence. Yet there is nothing I can do. I don't even know how I will be able to pass this first night in this foreign place. Oh God, what am I doing here? Why? What happened? I was in a prison cell. Next thing I know, I woke up next to you. What are you talking about? It was probably just a nightmare. Go to sleep already. And that's what I wish to want. Yeah, would you Should like I to go start? first? Start? <laughs> yeah, go okay. on, go on, please. Um, uh, and then you're gonna help me with that. Um, so, actually, it was for our drama class. Actually, we had to do it, you know. It wasn't only for fun. Mm -hmm. um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we yeah. wanted to see some drama, a real drama. Mm -hmm. That's why um, our topic is kind of dramatic, you know. That's that makes it different than our actual classmates, I guess. Um, it was our mm -hmm. first experience with Machinima. And actually, um, mm -hmm. beforehand, we thought uh, about teaching some cultural, um, you know, aspects. But then we decided on teaching a grammatical item. Um, that's why um, mm -hmm. we, we chose this topic, that end. Um, so, and we mm -hmm. wanted to teach wish clauses, as you already know. Um, to guys, <laughs> would you mm -hmm. want to continue? <laughs> uh, actually, you said most of it, but I'll add a few things. Um, as Yamur said, it was uh, a must. We had to uh, do something about the project. So, Mr. Tunjarjan uh, introduced, introduced us with sample videos of machinimas. And uh, after, like, a few sessions of brainstorming, we came up with the idea of dead end. 
Um, uh, mm-hmm. said it was basically about teaching um, a grammatical item, which is wish clause. Uh, but what we wanted to do was uh, we wanted it to be in a context. So we yeah. created our machinima according to that context so that students can understand in what context they should use or they can use uh, wish clauses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, the focus was on speaking. It wasn't only just on gra- grammar. Okay, so my next question was about um, any challenges, asking for challenges you had to face uh, during the um, uh, during the production of Machinima. <laughs> Do I start? I guess this is <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's my turn, I guess. <laughs> well, actually, uh, when I first saw some examples of Machinima, uh, I thought like it will be impossible for us to create one because uh, it demands higher level of digital literacy. Uh, but as as we got involved with it, um, I felt like it wasn't that hard. But of course, we faced some mm-hmm. um, technical challenges, uh, such as I mean, you have to have a very good computer in order to shoot a machinima, uh, because as mm-hmm. you know, in in Second Life, uh, in order to uh, have a really nice picture of uh, the scenes, you have to have a compatible computer. Uh, so you have to have yeah. that one first. Then, of course, we didn't know some options in the in the second life, like uh, in what angles we can shoot the scenes, uh, how can we, you mm-hmm. know, discover the options, uh, and um, what can we do about the scenes? I mean, do, are we going to need some items, or should we build a house or something? So these were the problems. Of course, uh, Mr. Tunjer John helped us a lot. Uh, to figure uh, these out, but other than that, I I watched a lot of videos uh, about how to create a okay. machinima on on YouTube, mm-hmm. and I have okay. uh, I mean I read some papers on how to create machinima as well. Okay, and I mean, um, would you like to add uh, something, Jamwa? Um, yeah, as you said, we had technical problems. Like now with the microphone, we had a problem. That's why we had yeah. to record our voices, you know, and then add it to mm-hmm. the machinima that we have created. And other than that, since we don't live in dorms, thank God, uh, we don't have, you know, mm-hmm. any external sounds going around. That's why, um, mm-hmm. yeah, everything was good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um when you created your produced your video, I mean, you you worked in a team. So was it quite clear from the beginning who was doing what? How did you share the roles? Um, I mean, were you made to to work together, or did you choose uh, to work together, or how did that work? I mean, you know, the the production is so fantastic that it sh- looks that you must have been a fantastic team to to work on it. Thank you. Actually, we made the team, so we created it. Um, mm-hmm. And then after we wrote the scenario, we, you know, just divided, uh, you know, like, um, I don't know how to say it right now, like, uh, and we uh, we took our characters, you know. Um, okay. I think it all, it all happened spontaneously, you know. So did you have one who was uh, the camera woman or man, or uh, did you split that up, or did you all have a go at, uh, you know, filming or editing? Was there a problem, or was that smooth and easy? I I, I have a few things set up here, actually. Um, (laughs) Okay. in our department, we usually uh, prepare projects uh, in a group, so we are used to collaboration and working together. Um, of course, we split up some uh, tasks, for example, writing the script. While we were writing the script, we worked together because everybody had an idea about how the characters would be, what they would say, so uh, it was a good idea to work as a team. But uh, for the mm-hmm. editing part, uh, actually, uh, I did the most of the work because 
uh, I am familiar with the technical stuff. Um, but uh, the other part, shooting part, for example, um, in one scene, for example, I was the camera. In another scene, the Yamur was the camera, and in another scene, Nerida. So we split up the uh, tasks. Mm -hmm. So good teamwork, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the end, end product was good as well, <laughs> as you said. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, my question here, what motivated you to get involved in the production of Mashrama, you partly answered already. Uh, the motivation was uh, Tonjer Khan, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Who, ma who made you do it? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, uh, from this first... Uh, I, I understood from you that after this initial, oh, we have to do it, that you really uh, got motivated and into it and enjoyed it, right? Or not? Well, yeah, we, we really enjoyed it, actually. Uh... Yeah, it showed so much enthusiasm in the, yeah. uh, you know, that, that just showed. I mean, so thinking of that, how important was the learning experience uh, for your studies as future language teachers, do you think? Um, I couldn't hear you. That's the last question on the slide. Mm -hmm. How important was the learning experience oh. for your studies as future language teachers? Okay. Actually, um, we didn't only create the machinima, and we had to adopt it to a lesson plan. Um, you know, we, okay. learned, we learned how to use technology inside a lesson, actually. That's the most important thing, I guess. Um, you know, um, other than that, um, other than that, it's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, other than that, I mean, as language teachers, we usually depend on sources uh, and materials from the Internet or from the books. Uh, but with cre mm -hmm. creating Machinima, what we realized was uh, we can create our, our own material according to our students' needs. That, that's very important because um, you don't feel like you're dependent on outside. You, you can create something. And by creating something, you can transfer this knowledge to your classroom as well um, with, creating, with designing a lesson plan. So we had that as well. And we are going to put this in practice uh, in a few weeks in our language club, and to see how the reaction to see the reactions of our students. Mm -hmm. And will you uh, in your language uh, club? Will you also uh, go into uh, virtual worlds into Second Life, and um, motivate your students to create their own machinima, or is that a step too far? Well, uh, actually, the, their level might not be right for them to create a machinima at the moment um, because mm -hmm. they're pre intermediate and the course is only volunteer, so they might not be interested in it. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to show them the machinima with our design lesson plan and see the reaction mm -hmm. of them. And if they are okay to go okay. with it, then why not? Of course, we can ask them to do something similar or simpler, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Anything but to in add our, to that? In my future classes, okay. for example, when I'm appointed yeah. or when I have an actual class, um, I'm thinking of uh, doing it. I mean, I'm thinking of motivating my students to create their own machinima. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and uh, what would prevent you from using machinima in the language classroom? Would anybody like to answer that question? Um, I think technical problems in Turkey. We don't have, you know, internet access or, you know, technical mm -hmm. materials everywhere and and in public schools especially. I think that that would be yeah. the, you know, most important problem. And other than mm -hmm. that, um, I'm not sure if, you know, universities other than ours actually, you know, work in, in you know, some, some programs like we do, like Machinima or Second Life. So I don't think everyone mm -hmm. is actually, you know, aware of it. Um, that's another yeah. problem. Um, I don't know anything else. 
Yeah, but as you said uh, before, I mean, um, some of you might just uh, use Machinima uh, you created and other people in your drama group created to use it in, in your actual teaching practice, right? Yes. So um, you have already answered um, how you can engage and motivate your students in creating their own machinima. But do you see a difference between using machinima videos created in a 3D world and real life videos? Uh, of, of course, there are differences. Uh, for example, uh, you can't use gestures and body language uh, very effectively in Second Life. Um, however, in Second Life, you have many options, uh, such as, I mean, you have access to things, places you can't even imagine uh, them being accessible in real life. Uh, for example, let's mm -hmm. say you want to uh, shoot a machinima in London. You can do that. It's easy. You just press, type the on search button, and you're in London, and you want to do a different thing. In China, you can do that. I mean... Um, the possibilities are uh, limitless. You can do anything you like in Second Life. Of course, it has some limitations, but I think in the future, um, some development will be through and it will be better. Yeah, that's right. But uh, of course, you have to be aware of copyright issues. Yes, and, you're right. Uh, that kind of thing, right? So, you have to take uh, permissions I mean, before shooting a scene. Exactly, exactly, yeah. But I mean, people are very generous in uh, are, yeah. Second Life, I found. And uh, it's just a question that you ask, you get the permission. That's right. Anything else anyone wants to add to that? And I think that I'm you sorry. Know, 3D, 3D World uh, yeah. would be you know, more interesting for our students. And actually, we feel more comfortable when you know, acting out with our avatars instead of ourselves. Um, oh really? Can you say something more about that? That really interests me. <laughs> you know, like we might feel, you know, embarrassed, or you know, like we might be shy, you know, as characters we might be. That's normal. But when we're shooting machinima, um, we don't have to be ourselves. You know, we have our avatars. We can be anyone. You know, that's why it's more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I feel much more comfortable uh, in my sexy, nice looking <laughs> avatar <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so that's true. That's true. But I can't walk here yeah. in the streets of Hamburg as an avatar. That's quite <laughs> difficult. Yeah. So, technical issues, you mentioned some. Um, I mean, where, where did you did you do the recordings? Was that at the university in the lab or at home or where did you do the recordings? It was at our, ho at our home. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, mm. so you didn't have problems with bandwidth or anything then? Did, did you share bits of pieces of the uh, machinima you, you um, shot? Or how did you do that? How did it work? When you said you did it in your home. Uh, yeah, we, we had a I... meeting point. It was uh, at our 3D campus, Istanbul University. And um, okay. Mr. Tunjari Jan bu uh, built a house for us to shoot, us, shoot our machine. So we met there. Um, and mm -hmm. we split up the tasks. For example, um, as you saw on the machine, we had different scenes. Um, so, mm -hmm. for example, in one, I had to be the uh, camera, and Yamur was the one who was speaking. So we shot that first. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to other scenes. Uh, but of course, uh, while we were communicating, we had some problems with the microphones and stuff. Uh, but uh, okay. at the moment, at, at the same time, we use WhatsApp to sort that out. <laughs> so uh, ah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were texting at the moment and at the same time and uh, trying to shoot our machine as well, if in case we had a problem with the microphone. Yeah. Well, good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? 
I mean, did you did you have support? Uh, so you you are the the freak with technical stuff, Tungai. Yeah. But did you have support from the university or anybody if you got stuck actually, with anything? Actually, I got support from Mr. Tungai Jan. But other than that, uh, as I mentioned before, I watched a lot of videos uh, related to creating yeah. machinima, and uh, mm -hmm. I searched some forums as well, some blogs, uh, in case I had a problem, okay. an issue. Uh, I learned a lot from uh, those platforms actually about the camera uh -huh. camera angles, about other issues. You know how to solve uh -huh. uh, microphone issues and stuff. Uh, they, they were really helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not within my questions here, but it really interests me. Uh, you, you have shot this uh, great machinima. Are you um, interested or are you eager or hooked to uh, create more machinima after that with your group or with others? Yeah, we actually we want to create uh, more machinimas, but um, at the moment we are taking a, a course related to, not a course mm -hmm. actually, uh, it's like a teaching practice uh, about machine, how to create machinima. After we complete okay. that, I guess we are going to create more machinimas. Okay. And maybe and um, at the end... Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Uh, and, we, and we want to translate our machinima into Turkish. Um, <laughs> yeah. To mm -hmm. use it in, for Turkish teaching as well. Yeah, that would be really, really great. Because in our language class, uh, in in our language club, sorry, uh, we are teaching uh, Turkish to Erasmus students, uh, and mm -hmm. these machinimas, which are going to be in Turkish, will be used in future classes for Erasmus students. Okay. So in order to will help you them learn this? Turkish. Yeah, and will you use your production um, with other? Uh, kind of uh, voice override so that you could um, make it a Turkish film, which could be quite possible, or have you not thought of it? Uh, do you mean editing Turkish uh, script? Yeah, you, the, the film as it is, but just have the language in Turkish. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean I've, I've done that. We, yeah, I've done that with with German and English. You know, an English video, and then I I, I just put the German uh, voiceover on it. So I have got the film in English and in German. Yeah, yeah. We are, as I, as the Yamur said before, we are, I mean, we are thinking of cre making it in Turkish as well, but maybe with a different mm -hmm. script. Mm -hmm. Not just like um, okay. the characters are talking, but maybe with a background information, background voice telling this story in Turkish. Uh, yeah, that narrative, like, like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a narrative really, voice. Really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, something, the use of machinima in the classroom, this is something, I mean, for uh, Tugay, it's uh, something happening in his club, but for others who are not teaching yet, uh, but who are thinking of uh, the area they would like uh, to teach in. Um, so, I, I was uh, wondering what kind of genre of machinima would you prefer to use in your teaching? You know, and does, do you understand uh, what I mean with genre? Yeah, I do, because there are different genres okay. in machinima. It's like narrative and non-narrative. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. I, I would yeah. like to focus on short films uh, with narrative machinima. Okay. And others? I, I don't really know about the genres on machinima, like, you know. Yeah, in instructive uh, machinima or like narratives or, um, you know, um, a special focus on grammar or that kind of thing. Oh. I, you know, like you did with this film, I wish 
uh, that would be the genre would be the focus on on this specific form or grammar uh, and like uh, two guys said something about um, you know having the narratives or then you could have jokes for example or um, instructions you know or just information history or something like that Actually, making it narrative would be more interesting you know other than just you know using it as you know instructive machine or just teaching grammar you know like um, in Turkey we have a lot of material you know to teach grammar you know but using machine like mm -hmm. like you're using something different so we have to make it you know, okay. more different you know uh, I don't know if you know mm -hmm. what I mean but um, yeah yeah I, I do know I what you mean. would be better mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. And um, tell me, would you prefer to use uh, machinima in the physical classroom to using them in the virtual classroom? Um, I think I would prefer to use uh, machinima in the physical classroom uh, because that way uh, mm -hmm. I will bring virtual world to physical classroom. Uh, which would motivate my students since it is something uh, extraordinary. Okay. Would you agree? I Shama? totally agree. <laughs> um, and we okay. say hello to our lecturer, Tunjai Jan. He's here now. Hi, Tunjai. <laughs> Would you like to say hello as well? <laughs> hello. <laughs> Hi. It's good to see you around, and it's amazing what you created here with your drama <laughs> students. Wow, wow. Okay, so we lost Nalida. Yeah, because of our connection, I guess. Oh. Yeah, it's a shame, but uh, maybe we can um, take this up another time, right? No problem. So uh, my next point is which advantages and or if any disadvantages do Machinima have compared with real life videos, do you think? Well, uh, for the advantage part, I can say, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, you have a chance to manipulate what you're creating. Um, because it's really hard to create a real life video with a concept, with a context in it, or especially mm -hmm. for language teaching. Uh, but uh, with Machinima, uh, you can create any context and you can teach anything you like uh, as long as um, you know what you're doing and you know in what lesson plan you're going to teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And other than that, you know, like real life videos are like kind of cliche now. So, um, actually, like machinima, like 3D uh, environment is like more motivating for students. Um, yeah. Okay. Be be because. In way? Why, why do you think? Uh, sorry, from, from my experience, from our experiences, when, when we first saw the machinima, I mean, we were really motivated. We told like this is something uh, really amazing. I mean, the, if if we can use this in in our classes for language teaching, uh, students will definitely participate, whatever the lesson plan is. Um, so it, mm -hmm. it is an advantage for for teachers like us. Okay. Yes, and we we just can't find you know like for example when we just prepare a lesson plan, we cannot find the you know exact the proper and like the most suitable real like, real life video like uh, from the internet, but with Machinima, it's easy mm -hmm. for us to create it ourselves. You know. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Is it easier than to create a real life video? You think? A lot more easier, I guess. You know, acting out is like the hardest thing. You know? Okay. Okay, so you, as you said before, you prefer uh, to be an avatar, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mentioned something today about uh, uh, gestures and mimics. So 
that is uh, lacking in um, in um, uh, in in machinima um, or virtual worlds. Uh, how important are gestures and mimics in learning a language? What you say? What would you say? Uh, well, s since they're culture related, uh, it is really important uh, for language teaching. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it is missing in the second life. But as I uh, said before, I think it's gonna get more. Um, I mean, advance in that point. I mean, in the future, we will be able to use many mimics and gestures. Um, mm -hmm. If you compare it with real life world of real life videos, of course, you have got access to mimics and gestures, which is really good. But um, mimic and gestures, as I said, are crucial for language learning. Um, so if, if in the future um, we have a chance to shoot our machinimas with mimic and gestures, it will be perfect. Okay, there's a little slight echo. I don't know where it's from. I'm getting it as well. Yeah. It is gone now. Okay. But probably for me, from my computer, I guess. There's a problem well, with, with never the sign, mind. I guess. Yeah, so um, we might uh, just switch off or mute the microphone if we okay. aren't speaking, then okay. it will help. And I'll try to remember that myself. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's uh, very good. Um, have you anything else just to add to this uh, mimic and gestures in a video? Uh, Jamal? No. Okay. I don't know if we can hear um, you, but... <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> um, are you talking to Elida? I think she has a bad connection, Yamur. Would you like to add something? Um, no. I said no, but I think she can hear. I agree okay. with you. I thought you. Elida was <laughs> playing something. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I could hear you. Everything is fine. Uh, so you mentioned again uh, to guys something about uh, the importance of, of uh, cultural, um, you know, things with gestures and mimics. So, uh, do you think that cultural differences can be conveyed by a machinima? Yeah. Can I just say something about it? Of course, yeah. Um, Go ahead. Like I said before, before like we we decided on our dead end machinima, uh, we we had like many ideas, um, and because we thought that we can you know uh, concentrate on the cultural differences, we thought maybe you know we could create a you know international school platform, and then we can show you know the ac accent and you know um, cultural differences, you know using machinima, mm -hmm. uh, but then then we decided on doing that wish class thing, yeah. And what made you decide against it? Was it too complicated uh, or what? Oops. No, because I switched my microphone <laughs> off. <laughs> I, I, I would like to add something at this point, if, if it's okay. Yes, of course. Uh, sure. In our drama class, one, one group created a machinima based on superstitions in different cultures. Yeah. And yeah. I found it very informative. I mean, it, it was really good. So that way they used culture differences. Mm -hmm. And it was really effective. And so, yeah. So my question to Yama was uh, what uh, prevented you from uh, approaching? Uh, this idea of um, cultural differences in your um, area, uh, not area, in, in your production? Um, actually, uh, it was because of our, you know, lesson plan. Um, okay. Yeah. Like we, we needed something more, um, you know, something more on the grammar, you know, other mm -hmm. than, you know, mm -hmm. culture and else. Okay, so which kind of machinima videos do you think attract students most? Uh, 
Uh, of course, it depends on students' profile. Uh, so it might differ according to students, but in my opinion, uh, real-life related machinimas would uh, attract students the most. Because in our machinima, we, we made use of like flashbacks from one scene to another uh, instead of giving all the information about the story. Uh, we omitted some parts mm -hmm. like uh, to be like information gap. Um, and I guess it made it more interesting and engaging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with him. Okay. It actually depends on the student's age and, you know, language level. But um, mm -hmm. I guess for, like, adults especially, real-life machinima would be the best. But for the kids, you know, we can do something, you know, more uh, imaginative, I guess. Yeah, you can have a tomato walking along the street, for example. Yeah. <laughs> they, they will love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else to add, or is that... We can come to the next question, and that is, uh, do you think that the use of machinima videos can help learners to learn better than without them? And if you think so, why? Or why not? It's, it's dif difficult to say that it, I mean, yeah. make a, such a claim that as learners will learn better with them. Uh, but in my opinion, it will definitely motivate them because uh, we all in our classes we always talk about motivating students to learn something. So motivation is the key factor um, because um, if you think about machinimas, uh, what we bring into classroom is context with visual and audio support. Uh, so instead of just mm -hmm. teaching grammar rules explicitly, uh, in a machinima students will see how the language is used and in what way it is used. Mm -hmm. So for that, the mach Would machinima is a great source. Yeah. Would you agree, Jamal? Yeah, for motiv uh, motivation, machinima is, you know, is is a great source as he already said um, but other than that I'm not, I'm not really sure if it would affect the, you know the learning process because we haven't put it into practice yet and uh, we will actually see the results uh, in a few in a couple of weeks when we actually put it into practice in our language club and uh, we will let you know about the results as well oh yeah I'd really love to know the results because that's very important. Of course, for our research as well. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so that's, I think, my last question. In what way do you think that machinima videos could add to the quality of a, of language learning? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, for different learners, I mean. Uh, we always talk about like different materials, uh, just bringing like audio, videos, and context. And when we look at machinimas, we have everything I in one piece. So we have got the context, we have got the video, we have got the sounds and everything. So mm -hmm. students won't be won't be struggling with understanding in what context they can use the language. Um, they will have an mm -hmm. e example of how they can use it. So authenticity is an important Definitely. factor. Definitely. It is authentic plus real, yeah. real life related. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what we did in our lesson plan was uh, we focused on speaking skills uh, because mm -hmm. our machinima is open to discussion. Uh, we omitted background information. Uh, and we ask, we, we are going to ask actually our students to uh, come up with background information to our machinima. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. This is something we cannot achieve with uh, other materials. Uh, on other right. cases, you can omit the audio. You can ask your students to write dialogues, so they can just write any dialogue they would like to add on that specific machinima. Uh, that is very good as well. I mean, uh, uh, we are always talking about uh, autonomous learners, so students can bring mm -hmm. in something 
to classroom uh, by being creative. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Nilida made a very important point in the text chat. She said having all visuals together makes it more attractive uh, for students. And um, I think that's an important uh, point. Would you see that as well? I agree with her, yes. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think visuals, they are so important um, in in any learning um, connection context. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, I just let Nerida in again. So I have asked my questions I wanted to ask you, but um, I would like you to go ahead and ask questions. And maybe Carol would like to add something um, which she thinks has not been covered or touched or and uh, Tunsher may also want to add something. I, uh, I could hear some bits. I, I was having a struggle in places. But would you bring students into Second Life to make for them to make machinima? Uh, do you mean would we uh, in, in our future classes are we going to motivate our students to make their own machi machinima? Yes. Of, of course, that's, uh, that's the plan actually, but uh, since we are not graduated yet, um, I'm not sure what's going to happen because we are appointed by uh, the government. Uh, but um, seeing that how machinima works and uh, how effective Second Life is, uh, I'm definitely going to motivate my students to create their own. And um, I have got my example, I can show them. Uh, okay. And I'm sure they will be attractive with it and they will be eager to create their own. And would you use Second Life as the virtual world? Or would you use a game or a different one, Minecraft or World of Warcraft or something <laughs> different? Well, actually, I don't have much experience with the games and Warcraft. I know that uh, some uh, people are creating machinimas with them. Um, mm -hmm. But since we basically focused on Second Life, I think I'm going to um, motivate my students to use Second Life. Okay. Uh, I have a question to you, Carol. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, because I um, just got the impression that this uh, group is really enthusiastic uh, to go on with the practice and I thought uh, the Machinevol group uh, would be a good uh, point where people, if interested, could join uh, the group to get more practice and to film something together. Yes. Uh, Would you like to certainly? Um, to Machinevo say is a, a machinima making group that has just been running for five weeks. We've been running it and teaching people uh, to, to make machinima. That draws to an end on Friday, but everybody wanted to carry on. So what we have done is arranged to meet up every other Monday, um, and that's. Um, noon SLT, noon in Second Life, and we're going to carry on learning. So the first few sessions, we're going to look at wind light settings, we're going to look at green screen, we're going to look at building, texture work, scripting work, putting sounds into objects, looking at photography, looking at more advanced camera work, um, going shopping, and then putting things together into holodecks. Now, I know everybody from Istanbul was using the holodecks on the island. Um, I saw quite a lot of people in there at different times. And so we're going to be carrying on learning more skills that will all help build towards the knowledge that you need to make machinima quickly and easily. Uh, over, well, we've got it planned from now until summer. Um, starting on, hang on, the 
I think it was 23rd. I'm just checking the old-fashioned paper diary. Yes, the 23rd of February and every other Monday after that. So if anybody's interested in joining us, we'll be on Edunation and we'll be there. Uh, we will actually be advertising it as well and I will send to and chair the flyer and maybe he'll share it with everybody. <laughs> he didn't know about yep. it yet. <laughs> yes, we great. can share it, no problem. <laughs> Lovely. Um, yes, so if you, if any of you are interested in joining us, it'll be different things, it'll be all sorts, but all that will help build up the knowledge towards making machinima. So uh, we'll share that information. It, 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 I, I think it's great. Um, as for myself, I would really like to participate. And you already know the, uh, the, the, the space because it's on Edunation and you're close. Yeah. So it's nothing new uh, yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. Have you got any questions to either Carol or me or your super tutor, Dr. <laughs> Tunjur Chan? <laughs> well, uh, I don't have any questions. But if, if you have any further questions, or if Mr. Tunjar John has any further questions, we, we are ready to answer. Okay, may I, may I uh, just say hi? Of because course. Because I'm Hello. in the yeah. middle of a shopping mall and I'm sorry about the, about the noise and everything, <laughs> but I really wanted to make it here. <laughs> And uh, I'm, I'm really uh, thankful to all these guys doing this for us. And uh, also, Carol and Christelle, you too, for making all this happen for all of us. And uh, Tuga Yamur and Melina, this, these are the people from whom I learned how to Machinima last year in Machinima. And here we are, <laughs> you trying to do your own Machinima, which is, which is amazing. And I think that your your students will be doing the same things in the years to come. But this is the inspiration, Carol and Christelle. So thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much for doing all that for us. And, and today, why I was late for this meeting was because I was if I was invited to, to Bosphorus University and my students would know what mm -hmm. it means here in Turkey by the English language teaching department to talk about uh, machinima, to talk about uh, second life and all that. And they also want to be involved with the things that we are doing. Wow. So as you see, we are Congratulations, uh, a step further Tom from Bosphorus wow. University. I mean, yeah, so uh, my what students are a step further this from incredible. the best university in Istanbul. <laughs> and so I think uh, it's a great <laughs> chance for us to... I mean, technology brings all that talk to us. Uh, we thanks go, to you, Mr. Tunjaj. We can Tunjaj. do better than the others. I mean, yeah, no, it's thanks, thanks to Carol and Christelle there, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, they... Our pleasure. They, I mean, I would thank like you. to thank them as well because this this was a great opportunity for us to uh, convey what we have learned. Yeah. Well, thank you. It, it, as great, I said yeah, before, really, thank you. Uh, we are really, really impressed, and you are the ambassadors wow. for um, the Camelot project. And uh, you know, as I said to Tuncher uh, before, I haven't seen as many good films, uh, you know, uh, in in uh, such a, a short time produced. And I'm, I, I was really, my mouth was open. I was staring at the films. I was. <laughs> You know, like that, and it's really, really fantastic. And thanks so much. And I hope to see more in future. And I also hope to keep in touch. Yeah, well, I'll come to the sessions on on the Mondays. Yes, great. And uh, hopefully, we'll mix them all together eventually when we've learned a few more skills. But we can keep making them in the meantime. It's just that the Monday night sessions are the formal ones where we're going to be covering mm -hmm. new. Um, new bits of information and aspects. And you could try out Turkish on us, you know, you could try to make a simple Turkish video and try it out on <laughs> the me. people <laughs> hanging around there and teach us Turkish. The uh, German trying to, uh, you know, running about in adunation, trying to find something in Turkish <laughs> and then 
there you are. Make a film. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thanks a million. And uh, take care. And just send me a note if you have questions or anything. Thanks. Thank everyone. you very much. Thank you so much for everything. Bye bye. Bye bye. See. Bye bye. Hopefully see you all soon in Second Life. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll definitely see us. <laughs> Great.